let's start inshallah so do we have the brothers on this side and as well as brothers from the other side so let's start with this side jazakallah khair and keep in mind that uh, the question is uh, uh should shouldn't last for more than uh, 90 seconds inshallah great go ahead brother. Make sure the mic is working over there. Just tap on it. Just turn there. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khairan ala al kulli al kalimat. Ina tarjama. Ina bahibba da ibn tarjama. Ma'a ibn tarjama. Khalas, tayyib. Is it okay to speak in tayyib? In English, tayyib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My first. Okay. My first question is uh, regards to the first. Uh, two presentations, um, Brother Nasser and Brother Wadi, um, is uh, about um, <clears throat> many masajid, alhamdulillah, have uh, some investment or not investment, some money that's sitting in a bank. And they think that, okay, it's sitting in a checking account, unaware that if their money, if they're not de if debtor, they're creditors, and the bank is using their money to credit uh, somewhere else. They're not aware of the fact that their money can be utilized in mutual investment. That mentality is not there. Our position as imams, we are not. most of us are not board members, but we can do influence. Um, we're not prepared, we're not experts in this. How can we be prepared to pitch to our masajid to get their money out if they have a million or two or three million dollars sitting in a checking account for the last 10 years? Get them out of there or get some of them out of there, put them in the mutual fund. Can you provide training, uh, tutorials, um, PowerPoint presentation, or can you come yourselves? How can we reach that? That's question number one. Question number two is for uh, Dr. Sihili and uh, Dr. Qubba. Asalu bil Arabi, if I can. If I can, if you can. In terms of the accounts, 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 إذا كان في إعادة إذا واحد اكتشف أو إذا جاء يعني إنسان يريد أن يتوب من مسألة كان يظن أنها فيها حل واكتشف بده يطهر بس عنده سنوات كثيرة سابقة كيف ممكن كيف الحالات اللي ممكن يعيد فيها حساب السنة يعني يخرج فيها زكاة عن عدد كبير من السنوات ممكن يصير المبلغ أكبر من ما في طاقته كيف الخيارات اللي ممكن تساعد الإنسان على التوبة في مسألة التبنات في مسألة حسابات التقاعد ما عنده رأس المال الآن لكن عليه زكوات أو عليه تطهيرات كثيرة سابقة حفظكم الله الله يزيد من خير Thank you very much for the question regarding the questions regarding the money the access money in the masjid and you wanted to invest it which is something very prudent and very smart to do uh, the short answer is you can invite us and I'm sure the other companies to come to the masjid to actually give a presentation. I know Dr. Maran Kubal does that and to a lot of masajid about Islamic finance, something similar to what we just did today but in a more condensed way. And we can talk to your board um, and um, explain to the different options that they have for investments and uh, all the options that there is available in the market and they can, you know, that would help in making that decision to move the money from a checking account to an Islamic Finance product. So that I mean, uh, that specifically you want me to go to, I think we'll take a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can email you a package. That's not a problem. I give you, you know, like for like a, it's so that you they can have like an endowment. So uh, we have like an Islamic endowment program. So we're able to encourage people the benefits of an endowment, um, the guidelines, the you know, there's benefits unlike other investments. Uh, this is um, this is very good. So I can, I'm more than willing to email you. Jazakallah khair, brother. Dr. Zuhaydi sayujibuka an sual thani. Assalamu alaikum. Ayyuhu al-Ikhwa al-Kiram, Mawdu' al-Halal wa al-Haram, Amr muhim, wa shayt al-Rasul, al-Barra, al-Halal bayin wa al-Haram. Nukta al-Thani, Rafiq al-Khisar, anna al-Halal akthar min al-Haram, 
خلق لكم ما في السماوات وما في الارض كل محرم قديم نقطه ثانيه ما في شيء حرام الا اوجد الشرع له بديل على او اكثر او اكثر من بديل يعني ما في ابواب مغلقه ابواب مفتوحه الانسان اختلاف المال الحلال بالحرام كثير ايضا اختلاف كثير وخاصه في العصور الحاضره ومن هنا نلاحظ ان كثير من النوازل اللي منها مثل التامين والاستثمارات وفي العصر الحاضر وغياب الفكر الاقتصادي الاسلامي الكامل في فكر اقتصادي نعتز به هو فكر اقتصادي اصلا الاسلامي في القرن العشرين وال21 جديد ونعتز به ولكنه في اول الطريق النقطه الرابعه اذا سؤال الاخ الكريم اذا اكتسب انسان مالا من استثمار بأي عمل بأي سبب ثم اكتشف بعد ذلك أنه فيه حرام فهنا نفرق بين أمرين إذا كان عالما من الأول وعمل وعمله فيكون آثما ويجب التخلص منه أما إذا كان لا يعرفه جاهلا حديث الرسول واضح في هذا رفع القلم عن ثلاث رفع عن أمة الخطأ والنسيان وما استكره عليه وما دام لا يعرف لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها نتيجة يكون غير آثم ولا ذرة يعني غير مؤاخذ فيما كسبه لكن مال حرام لا يجوز له أن ينتفع به فهنا يقدر تقريبا كان عم يشتغل في تجارة قديش أرباحها قسم الحرام قديش أرباحه 5% 3% 10% كذا لسنة سنتين خمس سنوات عشر سنوات يجب أن يتخلص منه ولا يكون آثما فإن أكله هنا الإثم تفضل الدكتور عم تقول لي إنه هل يكفي التوبة هذا يذكرنا أيها الإخوة الكرام ب توبة شروطها ثلاثة وإذا كان فيها حق لآخر أربعة منها التخلص للحرام والمال الذي كسبه حرام وقد يكون من أشخاص معينين فيجب أن يردها إليهم ولا تقبل التوبة إلا برد المال لصاحبه إن كان لا يعرفهم فيقدرها ويتخلص منها والله يبارك له فيما بقي فدرهم حلال أفضل من مليون حرام يتخلص منها بالاجتهاد بالتقدير إن أخطأ الله بسيبه أما يقوم بذلك بقدر طلع ألفين ثلاثة خمسة عشرة يعطيهن لجهة للمصالح العامة ما الحرام يتخلص به من المصالح العامة وهذا ذكرت قل إذا كان مالا مختلفا فيأخذ له الحلال أما الحرام فيجب يجوز أن يأخذه ليتخلص منه وإن تركه لا مال الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير شيخنا uh, Just a reminder uh, the question up to uh, 90 seconds the answer between 2 to 4 minutes insha'Allah. Uh, brother from this side. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Barakallahu feek for participating for your excellent presentation. Uh, I hope when I ask this question you understand this is merely seeking clarification. It is not a challenge for this nation. Also, since I heard the question from a translator, if I misunderstood him or if he misunderstood you, my apologies beforehand. 
what we heard in the presentation was that uh, if a person pays zakah on a retirement account after a period of one solar year, which as you mentioned is 10 days more than the lunar year, he has to pay zakah at a capacity of more than 2.5%, slightly more, because a certain number of days have passed. Were we indicating in the presentation that it is something which is allowed Muslims to do, that is pay zakah on a, capacity, on a period more than the lunar year? regularly, or was that something that a mistake has been made once by a Muslim, in which case they need to pay zakah slightly more than 2.5%. Okay. Uh, so Roshan, I, I didn't get the question clearly. Okay, um, the Could question... Could you please just start? Go ahead. Okay, slow down. Yes, Dr. Muhammad Zuhaini, ذكر أن الزكاة بالنسبة للسنة الميلادية هي 2.57 فاصل لأنه في عدد أيام زيادة عليها فهل هذا مسموح للمسلم بأن يحسب زكاته بناء على السنة الميلادية وليس على الهجرية ويغير نسبة الزكاة أم هو إذا فرضا أخطأ وتأخر حتى أتم سنة ميلادية فسيخرج هذه النسبة من الزكاة أصل دائما نرجع للأصول الزكاة وجميع الأعمال الشرعية حسب التقويم الهجري وحسب السنة القمرية ومنها الزكاة بدأ زكاته في محرم السنة الثانية في محرم في شوال في شوال في رمضان في رمضان هذا وهذا ما كان يتم في العالم الإسلامي في وين 14 قرن إجا القرن العشرين والواحد وعشرين وظهرت الشركات التي تملأ الدنيا وظهرت قوانين العالم بما يسمى الميزانية الميزانية السنوية وكل الشركات والدول ميزانيتها تنتهي 31 الطعش فوجد التجار المسلمون حرصا على دينهم أن بإخراج الزكاة وجد صعوبة أنهم سيقيمون تجارتهم وأعمالهم في سنة هجرية وفي سنة قمرية فما الحل الحل الحمد لله علماء الاقتصاد المسلمون المسلمون والخبراء المسلمون موجودون فحسبوا أن الزكاة في الأصل على 355 يوم السنة الميلادية 366 ربع فحسبوها بدقة بالحسابات اللي يعطونا النتيجة التي عرضها أكثر من الدكتور معا هم يعطونا النتيجة مختبرين المحاسبين أنه يجوز الجواب باختصار يجوز تحصل الزكاة على التقويم الميلادي بشرط أن يبدأ من يعوض العشرة أيام حق الفقراء دائما علماء الطهارة يقولون نراعي جانب الفقير فمن هنا هذا الكسر والتجار يقومون بهذا طبعا التاجر أيضا عنده محاسب وخبير يستطيع أن يحسب هذه الأمور بسهولة و الزكاة ويعطي هذا الحق الطيب للفقراء ويقيم هذا الركن أقول قبل عشرين ثلاثين سنة قامت إحدى الجامعات مؤتمرا للزكاة بعنوان الفريضة المنسية الناس كانت غايبة عمر ثلاثين أو يسئل الآن الحمد لله تجدد كان عنده الإيمان من جميع المسلمين في الطبقات حرص على أداء الزكاة بما فيها من فضل وتوافي الدنيا قبل الآخر والله وليكم جزاك الله خير شيخنا براذر فرام ديس سايد إن شاء الله أنا أريد أن 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 أري
But before I ask it real quick, can you clarify uh, your position regarding uh, purifying the income, for example, from stocks that have some harm component? Does the individual need to purify some portion of that wealth? Uh, then I can ask you a question. I would, I would refer to Brother Muhammad actually who has written something in this, uh, uh, in this regard, like how to, how, how to do the math, how to purify the, the income. I think he came up with the two different formulas. You want to have that? You want to elaborate on that? So we'll actually be discussing this in a subsequent presentation. Would it be okay to wait until then? All right. There, that, there's. That's fine. I was. That's fine. I can ask my question. Uh, basically, my question is uh, for Dr. Man: Would paying the tax be considered a be, be uh, considered the purification? Uh, process because uh, considering that the tax money will go to the Masalah al amma anyway um, also consider the fact that when you calculate your tax you're calculating it on the total profit uh, for that year versus the profit from one individual transaction um, and it could be the case that you made profit on one individual transaction but later you lost money so now you're paying, prop, paying purification uh, percentage and then at the end of the day you lost money anyway that was clear. Let me answer the first part that uh, that I understood. Uh, was it was it about paying tax that is sufficient from paying the cattle mail? No, no, of course not. Uh, would pay would the fact that you're going to pay tax approximately fifteen percent, for example, uh, be sufficient to purify the haram portion, considering that the tax is going to be um, going to Masalah al amma anyway? So you assume that your income does have does have a certain percentage as haram. Yeah, from can a stock. Can you do your math? Can you do your math in a way that whatever you pay to the federal government, okay, you, you will be paying that haram money to the federal government? Well, if I if I recall from the presentation, he said approximately five percent should be donated in masalah amma to purify. No, just just keep it general, akhi. Your income is ninety percent halal. I'm just giving an example. You, you, your income is 90% halal and 10% haram. When you did your math, you found out that you have to pay to the federal government $5,000 tax, income tax. And your haram actually was 5000 Can you pay that 5000 to the federal government? Is this your question? Yes. Sorry. What's that? Let me let me think about it, inshallah I will I will get back to you inshallah. Sheikh and Dr. Salah. Father Say them. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته المال الذي تعتقد حرمته سواء كان فائدة ربوية أم كان كسبا خبيثا تولد عن عقد فاسد فأنت تتخلص منه بتوجيه المصارف العامة لا تتموله ولا تنتفع لا تتموله ولا تنتفع 
يعني كما نقول لا يجوز لك أن تقي بالسائدة مالك لا يجوز لك أن تقي بالمال الحرام مالك فالضرائب كنت كنت ستدفعها على محالك التزام مدني ستدفعه بالمالك على محالك فلا سبيل لا فلا سبيل لك إلى رده فلا تخلط بين ما يجب أن تتخلص منه وما ينبغي أن تدفعه باعتباره التزاما مدنيا فلا فلا يغني هذا مقام لا يقوم هذا مقام ذاك هما طريقان منفصلان فيما يبدو لي لا يظهر أن يقوم أحدهما مقام الآخر. جزاك الله خير شيخنا. Uh, can we have a question from the left side and then one of the sisters. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جزاك الله جزاك الله خيرا أنا سؤالي للأخ محمد واحد اسمحوا لي ان اقدمه بالانجليزيه. Uh, Brother Muhammad Wahdi, جزاك الله خيرا for being here and addressing the professional aspect of the topic of Islam So I'm a financial analyst and uh, one question concerning uh, the sentence I have heard and I would like to have a clarification on it that uh, because I'm kind of sensitive to using Sharia compliance as an excuse for driving up costs or uh, having less than the market or the benchmark in ter- uh, returns in your portfolio. You know that most of the systematic risk in the market, uh, unsystematic risk in the market, is uh, uh, will be diversified if you have a portfolio of between 20 and uh, and 42 stock or company. Then, how do you just uh, and you have said something that you will have a lower performance that, than the market and a higher risk because you're limited to only Sharia compliant stock. Addressing that, please, and I would just like to add another uh, clarification. Concerning another point that we have in the, uh, in the Middle East, Sharia compliant company that they do provide their prohibited income on behalf of the investors. And if we are investing in these portfolios, then there is no purification on the uh, portfolio level. So it could be addressed that's concerned with the Middle, Middle East. But please, uh, Brother Mahdi, I would like to have a clarification why we should have a higher uh, unsystematic risk in a Sharia compliant fund, although we can diversify. So that's actually a very good question, uh, slightly a technical question, but basically uh, the question was, why does having a Sharia compliant, say, stock market investment imply that an investor will take on more risk than, say, a conventional product? Uh, the answer is fairly simple. Um, the underlying risk that you're taking when you're investing in the stock market is uh, an equity risk. So uh, in, a, in a traditional, say, uh, uh, balanced portfolio, you're taking on both equity risk and, say, interest rate risk, fixed income risk, right? The, uh, these two risks are not, are, you could say, are inversely correlated, which means that when the stock market goes up, the prices of fixed income assets might come down a little. But when stock prices come down, the assets of fixed uh, fixed income uh, prices go up a little. So in a balanced portfolio, the goal is to provide diversification across risks, not across individual securities. This is a popular misconception um, that I, you know, most, most people have. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm not saying that using a Sharia compliant investment product is excessively risky. It just means that, you know, as, a, you know, as an investor who seeking Sharia compliance, you have to understand that you are bearing on more risk. It's a more like pure equity risk in that sense. Does that answer your question? Uh, you know, Brother Nasser also reminded me that uh, there are some Sukuk funds available, um, which, uh, which also might potentially be, be a balanced uh, asset. That's that's going on to a different different topic, but inshallah. One of the sisters. Assalamu alaikum. I have a few questions for Dr. Ma'an about zakah, uh, not specifically about retirement, but just in general about investments. So first question is related to um, differentiating between whether you're intending to buy a stock for capital appreciation versus income. I mean, sometimes you want to buy a stock both because you think appreciate value and because you want income so how can you 
distinguish there. And then, like, if you're, for example, a high net worth individual is investing their money in a company in private uh, investments, they and they have their money locked in for 10 years, then at, at the end of that 10 years, they are hoping for capital appreciation on that investment, but do they have to pay Zakat in that interim? And if the answer is no, then why do they not have to, but you would in the stock market, just because their, mark, their investment is illiquid? Um, the other question is about your comment about fixed assets. Um, let, let me take the first question, if you don't sure. mind. When it comes to uh, Zakat calculation, we have to make a clear cut uh, distinction between someone who has stocks in the market and his common practice throughout the whole year long is that he does not speculate, buys and sells and just watches the news and, and the Yahoo finance and you know buys and, and sells. And he is happy with the dividend that he receives every single year. If this is the very common practice, someone opens, a, let's say, a simple investment account and he uh, you know, instructed his wealth manager or financial advisor clearly I do not want to speculate in the market. I'm just happy with the dividend that I have. This is actually equivalent to what is called zakatul zakatul mustaghallat. I mean, this scenario is very similar to someone who has a rental property. Okay. Rental property. Does he have to pay zakat on the market value of the house, or he pays zakat only on the lease revenue that he makes? He pays zakat on the lease revenue or the rent money that he receives. So this one actually is equivalent to this to this one. Now the very other scenario that's way different is that if the common practice is speculating in the market, buying and selling, even if you slow down for some days or some weeks or some seasons, but again the common practice is that you are active in the market, active in the market, and that's why I insist that if you have a mutual fund, then you have to pay zakat on everything, because the, the, the mutual fund means that someone is investing your money on your behalf. Someone is investing your money, you'll be happy. So it's either or. Okay. You are happy with the dividend, you pay zakat on the dividend. Well, that is that is zakat al mustaghallat. If you are active in the market and you keep buying and selling, then you have to pay zakat on everything because that's all the tijara. The stock in this particular scenario is equivalent to the car that is in the market for sale or the house that you put it in the market for uh, for sale. Is this uh, clear? Yeah. Yes, that's clear. Your, your second question? Well, my other question was related to the fixed assets comment, but really that's if you're actively trading. But I mean, you can, it's hard to, when you say, you talk about removing fixed assets from the value, but you can do that if you're looking at the book value of a stock, you can remove the fixed assets. But if you're looking at the market value, that doesn't really have an equivalent or doesn't isn't related to the book value um, or the fixed assets. So, when you're talking about paying zakat and removing the fixed assets, are you taking saying move it from your book value, or are you saying remove it from the market value? Uh, my simple answer actually is I do not know, because I, I, I'm here just to uh, you know decide the fiqh fact that you need to. I mean, I mean, if you if you choose to, then you can deduct the fixed asset. Now, how to determine the percentage of the fixed asset? That is the business maybe of the accountant or the you know finance specialist how to do the math honestly I do not know you see but again the fiqh rule here is that if you decide to uh, to exclude the fixed assets in any company this is absolutely your right because the fixed assets are not zakatable to start with how to figure it out you need to ask somebody else clear yeah uh, and now we're going to have a brief presentation uh, by our uh, one of our sponsors uh, Islamic Relief and with uh, Fadilat Sheikh Dr. Saad. <laughs> 